Hello everyone, this is Janet from Mixed Media Mama. I wanted to show you today my creations for Elizabeth Craft Designs, David's new collection, Journal Elements Collection. Now all the information of what the dies and the stamps and the abandoned paper collection will be all down below along with a few other inspiration videos and things like that. I wanted to give you firsthand, and this is their social media. There's a little bit more social media, but this is what I am connected to with the Art Journal Specials. You can see that on Facebook and the ATC. That's where I will be posting all of my videos that are connected with Elizabeth Craft Designs and David's collection. It is such a great honor. I am so stoked to have you along for this ride too and for me to show you what I can create. I'm gonna start with a simple to the maybe not so simple. I am using David's whole collection uh, of papers called Abandon, Abandoned Collection. They are just stunning, stunning papers. Absolutely love them. They have a little bit of a grunge vintage feeling and they are right down my alley, right down my alley. Love it. Okay, this first one is just going to be a paper clip. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at that. I just got the inspiration from David's collections of it's all about artists trading cards. And I, knowing you know me, I always want to think outside of the box. I love using elements and making them into unique projects. And so why not using the artist trading cards as a specimen slide? And that's what I've done here. The first thing is that I just made, took a giant paper clip. This is, this paper clip's about three and a half inches, but you can use the same idea um, with a, maybe a ticket or a tag in his collection um, with a smaller paper clip if you don't have the giant ones. The concept, you, you understand that. And I just, took a little embossed with embossing glaze to help match that. And then I just sewed it on and glued it on. But this ATC, it is uh, approximately a two and a half by three and a fourth or what is, it's, a, it's about the size of a, a playing card, but it's all ATCs are about the same size here. And I just took the ticket, the small, ticket punched it out on both sides and use a portrait that I had on hand from Tracy Fox Love Junk Journals. Aren't they just cute? But all of these others, you know, the fonts, the stamps, the little dies here, the little, uh, looks like a, a torn paper banner. Oh my gosh, it's just so cute. I just layered it up, just layered it up, and it made it into a lovely. And of course, you can see the little uh, glare of the acetate. It's just plastic wrapping. You know, some of the things that you get your, your paper, your dyes, and the plastic comes with that. I just made it into, I just glued that on and made it into a nice little specimen card. And that just fits right there, nice and easy. And then it will go right onto a page in your journal and to close, or you don't have to have it to close the page. Or you can just have it as an element. Isn't that just beautiful? But that is the first. The second is a page that goes into the artist trading card. And this is part of a die set. And I'm not going to remember which dies I use and what, who, where they belong to. I will just list all the whole collection down below. And you can go on to Elizabeth Craft Designs and find out which one really inspires you. But I wanted to show you some different ways of using 
and incorporating artist trading cards. Now, I just took some old paper. This paper right here, let me, let me go back. The base of this folder is David's paper. And this splatter is already on the paper. This grunginess is already on the paper. I just edged it just a bit with the Tim Holtz Scorched Timber. But look at how beautiful that paper is. And all of his papers, and they're very sturdy papers. They're very hefty. So having them as a base and doing mixed media on them really holds up and you will see how well they hold up as I go on. But it is just beautiful set. I cannot talk enough. So anyway, on the inside of this first page, this is just a piece of um, postcard that I had around. I thought it was just beautiful. I loved how it just really fits in. And I cut the postcard down because I didn't really want to use the whole thing. I just used two thirds of it, but I loved that background. And this is a remnant of this piece here underneath. It's the same as the cover. And I just used his stencil. Yes, that came with its set. The stencil and I Put, I, I use the Tim Holtz Mixed Media. It is the texture paste. And then, of course, he does a method of um, pouring his embossing glazes over, letting them dry. Once they're dry, you can go back and emboss them and, that's, and, and dry it. Use your heat gun and dry and emboss. And that's what I did. Isn't that just lovely? I love that, that indention and that texture that is just so yummy. So yummy, but that turned into a nice little tuck spot. And of course, crazy is the new normal. I did a little collage of layering. All of these shapes are from David's, oop there, David's collection. All of these shapes, the just is so pretty. I just love it. And then of course, Crazy is the new normal. That is on his journal phrases number three. And of course, the coin. And these are three coins together. So the base is just book pages. It's the shape. And it reminds me of a gear, the one with the little holes in Reminds me of a year. And then the next one is the wavy. And of course, this stamp is from his collection. Be in the moment is from his collection. Of course, the small. And all of these shapes are in the one die. A die set, excuse me, die set. And I just layered them up very, very thin. And that goes right in that tuck. Now, this is really cool. It wasn't my, I was just inspired. It wasn't my um, original idea. I, we all share, we all are, are inspiration for others. But there again, I used a postcard for the back, very similar to this postcard here, because I wanted to kind of have a different flow, but I made a concertina isn't that to hold more ATCs? Now, what I used here is a seed specimen die from one of David's previous collections last year. But all of these right here, the paper, the background paper, I'm gonna take this. The background paper is from his collection, The Abandoned. And then there again, I just layered the circles. This paper is glassine and I will be doing a video on how to use up your 
old paper that you really don't know what to do with, especially if it has a little bit of a, a wax or things. I will, I will do that in future. But here is the same shape. Here is, and then of course, different elements from his collection. And then the, f the feather, oh, isn't that just a beautiful feather? But there again, I just emboss it with glazes to help bring out the colors. So I made a concertina folder out of vintage wrapping paper. Very easy, very, very easy. And this I used leftovers. This was just a tag, just a tag. I um, inked it up, sprayed water on it, wiped it off, and that's what gave it that yumminess. Used leftover piece of here because as you can see, this right here is the shape of the cut out flower from the border flower die. And so I used the negative for that and I just did a little bit, I don't know if you can see, you see that little crap, crackle paste underneath? It's, it's Tim Holtz crackle paint. And I spread it on very thin just to give it a little bit of a texture. And then of course I went over it with some ink and to go into the cracks. But you can see a leftover piece of his little page. I just love these. I'm not even sure what they're called, but I just love them. And of course, the small ticket. Another, I, I fussy cutted one of those beautiful portraits. Another little label, time of your life. Wouldn't that be so fun, having friends like that? Oh. I do, and we are just a hoot getting together. So, very blessed. That goes into the first one. Let's pull out the second one. There again. I love getting this one. It's just attached with a brad using David's paper. What I did, I just put some of more of that crackle paint through David's um, splatter dye, I want to call it. It just is so cool. I let it dry. You can see all those luscious cracks in there. Isn't that gorgeous? I just let it dry. And that is a beautiful example because I can feel that it is raised. It's not huge and high, but it is enough that I can feel the tactile. And it's enough that, you know, you get those gorgeous cracks. So that is another testament that this paper is really well quality paper. It's, it has a lot of, it's hefty. It really is hefty. So then I just use some, um, um, glimmer sprays? No, it's Tim Holtz Mica, Distress Mica sprays. And I just watered him down because I wanted that color scheme to come in. I'll go back out. And so then I just um, die cut into a tag, had this tag already out from, and you can see that it was actually um, the. I think it's the same paper, but I just colored this tag a little darker so it would pop a little bit more off of that um, patina look. Had this, and you can see that beautiful dye with all the holes and the bloom and the little label. Used one of uh, Tracy's portraits. And it just, I love the fact that you can turn that and really admire it and goes, that's just so pretty. So pretty. David, I love all of your elements because they just go together so well. And that is the wonderful thing about Elizabeth Craft Designs. They do go from collection to collection, not just from art journal specials. 
it can be in the sidekicks, it can go into the planner, everything works together. That's the beauty of it. Um, it, it I love that. I love the fact that it all works together. Now this is just leftovers too, same concept. What I did in the back, love that watercolor look, that splattered, I just think that's so cool. I had some leftover, you'll see a bit of, this is the orange and the yellow in the back is an old vintage map. I used that in my third project and this was just leftovers. And of course, this piece right here is a leftover piece too. I cut this, I used it, and this was one piece of David's abandoned papers. Um, I just, this is just the negative and I stamped on it. You can see his, one of his stamps his sewing stamps, and I did that in the same color. I believe this is the uh, Scorched Timber Distress Ink, and then, of course, one of his journals from his journal th uh, three. No, journal phrases three. Life is short, so smile. And that just goes, it's a nice little bookmark, and that just goes right in there. The very last one is... Lots of color. Same concept. Same concept. Use David's paper on the back. See how see how non-warped they are? It's just I'm very, very impressed. I just love it because I more is more in mixed media for me. I just it's hard for me to stop putting layers and layers and layers of mixed media on. So what I did is I still used one of David's stencils. And um, that's where the plus signs come. I think it's plus and pluses and more. It's the journal stencils three. But oh, I love that. There's a stamp that goes along with that. I just used Tim Holtz crackle paint put it through there, let that dry, came back, and I used the crayons, his newer crayons that came out, and then I went back and I used David's stencil, the numbered stencils, and then I colored them with a wink of Stella brush, and of course, stapled enjoy the process on. It just is a wonderful way to show you what different ways you can use your artist trading cards size. Now this is just a little bit bigger than the artist trading cards. It's probably a, a three-fourths, uh, yeah, three-fourths of an inch taller because I wanted them to fit into the seed, um, the seed envelope from his previous. And I loved the fact that it, this concertina kind of comes out and you can kind of see what everything is, but yet it still lays flat. Great to go into the ATC journal. I just love that. And of course, if you want to put it on top, you know, put that paper clip on top, it's a nice little, nice little look. So that's one and two. So the third one is, I absolutely, I was totally inspired by Louisa Heinzel. And I figured I can do my own version of that beautiful um, project that she did for um, the reveal for Tim Holtz. I don't know which reveal it was, but I was so inspired. So I used the elements, same kind of concept, but doing it in the Janet flair. Loved it, loved it. What I use, this is all envelopes. It is meant to be just not in a journal, but just as a project. All, everything, the bases are all envelopes. The papers are used as David's papers from the collection abandoned. So the first thing I did is I wanted to put two envelopes together here. They're nice big envelopes, about a five by seven ish. I used what I had, you know, that is the thing about use what you have. Uh, it is so important for us to reuse, re, you know, repurpose things. And so it is closed with a little bit of sorry silk. The first side 
you will see that it is David's papers. And of course, this butterfly, this outside envelope is a glassine envelope that I made just out of vellum. I will do an additional video of how to do those in a, I will link that at another time. I don't have it all done, but I will make sure I, I already, that is already on my list. So as you can see, this lattice back here, that is another of David's dies. And of course, this beautiful butterfly. Now, what I did is that I took same die with book pages and then, of course, some glassine paper. Now, glassine paper came from, glassine is very similar to um, baking paper, I think, as I had seen maybe in Europe. That's the terminology. Forgive me if I, if I haven't, if I don't say it the right way. I'm, I think that's what you say it is baking paper, but this glassine has the same consistency, I believe. And in, in the U.S., it's called parchment paper, but then I colored it. So it gives that butterfly dimension, and I just love that. And of course, using ribbons like the sari silk, I just save all the <laughs> yes, I save. I save all of the, the fibers and I put them underneath just to give it a little, just a little bit more background. So that flips open. And this one is the leftovers. Here's this piece right here is a leftover. Of, and it's in the shape of a die, uh, excuse me, it's in the shape of the ATC card. And of course, this map that is splattered, it is one of David's dies also. Added a little bit of um, fiber. And behind that die, I don't know, see if you can see that glare it is just plastic wrapper because i didn't want as you put in a tag and this is a tag from his paper his collection to shape i didn't want to be um grabbing because this a uh, vintage map is very delicate so i put a piece of plastic so when you put this um, tag in it doesn't catch you know, on that. So what I did, the feather, I just embossed it with embossing glaze, put it back into the spot, and the same I did with this little clock for you. Yeah, there you go. And of course I just, this is a another die and the stamps. I love to sew. I am a sewer and I sew a ton of paper. Um, I also do a, a ton of sewing otherwise. But let's go. This is on the other side. I kept the vellum pocket as a pocket. But with this piece of paper, I will be doing another video of showing how to make this look. It is just... A gorgeous look. I was very inspired by Louise Heinzel again, but use it just went very well with the collection of David's. Using David's stamps and his stencils, isn't that just gorgeous? And look at you can just a pop of gold embossing powder. How beautiful is that? And you can hear the crackle of the of the vellum because this is just a vellum pocket. A shape using David's, I love this. Love the jagged look, love the paper look. And that just fits right in there. And of course, I had to put a vintage playing card in because that's what ATCs remind me of is playing cards. And it just flips open, see? 
just envelopes. Just a vellum envelope back here. We're going to do this one first. Let me see if that one. I am using leftovers, the negatives of the dies. So when you use the Elizabeth Craft dies, don't throw away the negatives because you make them, you can make them into backgrounds. Of course, here is a little pocket, a little ATC pocket. And I just layered, did some collaging, some fiber underneath there, some leftover trims. It is what it is, and I love that. Here's two ATCs, ATC coined, and I offset both of them. I stamped on this luscious paper. This can be, this um, technique can be done on the brown paper bags, uh, brown packaging paper, like from Amazon and things like that. You can use that type. I'll show you, I will do a video, it's on my list. And here it again. I used the negative side. I flipped the stencil over and I absolutely loved it. Used and made that into a card, ATC card. And I just layered, put a little piece of metal there, sewed it up. Lovely, lovely. See, you can use his dies for so many things. And the stamps, of course. So then the next, the next envelope is a CD holder. You can just kind of, I'm going to take these out so you can see. See the CD holder? Yeah, it is a CD holder. Isn't that wonderful? I took a leftovers. I'm going to come up really close here. This map is just torn leftovers from dies that I use throughout. And I just layered them. See, the, um, the map is such a thin, and I did not want to use it as um, a page on its own, so I layered them, and it really gave me a wonderful look. There again, his dies can be layered so easy and it doesn't give you a lot of thickness even though that they can be because these are out of his these two these three pieces right here are out of his papers even though his paper has a lot of tooth it still gives it nice thin when it's layered this is three layers right here and then of course the fiber and his shape and this piece right here is just made out of a um, piece of white paper that I utilize, um, that I inked up. And of course, a piece of the Elizabeth Craft Design. Um, oh, it's the stamping, that, that where they make cards out of that. Oh, there's a specific label for the, that type of paper. But uh, it's lovely. It's rough on one side, it's smooth on the other side great has a lot of tooth but anyway that turned into a pocket see the shape and of course behind the cd i put a piece of david's paper just to give it some visual and you can see that it is david's paper i just inked the cd before i even put it in this is just a cute coin love that and it had stars on it and so i just embossed the stars this is it comes in two parts i just thought that was really cool really really cool and i offset it too so i placed that up there and there again just regular tags from David's collection. Just the shape. I left them. I did not do anything to them because I wanted them to be shown how you can just utilize. And there's just some leftover. And this is just a shape of a um, bookmark using David's. But isn't that just so pretty? Now, if you didn't want to use 
tickets or tags, you can just put a picture behind there, and this, that could be, you know, that, and with a little, a little journaling card, perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm going to flip that open, but I'm going to show you this next one right here. It is a tiny little glassine envelope, and I really, this was the one of the last things that I, I made for, I just pulled it off. See the little glassine envelope? I just dyed that. But this, these are total leftovers. And it just fits over. This is just a little bit of coffee stain and colored inks on there. Of paper, made it into a little notepad flip up. But piece of the map, one of David's tickets, vintage coffee dyed paper, a tag upside down, and a piece of dictionary page. Sewed them all together, and you can utilize that. Now, if you want to put a picture on there, you can do, you can tuck a, a picture in there, or you could even put a picture in the envelope. There's many ways that you can incorporate pictures and your daily journals, but this is just a beautiful way to show everybody's got envelopes. So this butterfly, one of my favorite highlights of this whole book is this butterfly. All of these is the negatives of the butterfly that I did this with. So I wanted to keep that. I put mica, and it is a flip page. Excuse me. It is just a flip page. I am not, it's not anything but pretty, but I love how it looks on the whole page. It is just sewn together. And as you can see, there's mica pieces. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit closer. There are mica pieces, and you can kind of see this crack right here. It's two pieces of mica. You can get mica off of Amazon. Uh, mica is rock, and they it, it's a really hard, it's almost like a thick acetate. You know, I mean, mica is rock. It, it is just, but it has a look of a vintage look because it's a little bit darker. You can see it is a little bit darker than the regular. I just love that look. Just love that look. And of course, this back is just an envelope. And this is where you can put pictures. You can put more tags into there. I just put that in there just because I thought it looked great. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you on this side is just using a leftover piece. There's that Sir, um, circled coin that was cut out. Use that as a negative and then just collaged some of the pieces together. And you can see there's a label and there's this a nice little label. Here is a tea, tea bag right there. Try not to wiggle too much. There's this tea bag right here. You can kind of see it there. And of course, the outside of a label. And then, of course, the... I put... David, in his collection, has a set of stamps that is just beautiful. And you will see it is just like a set of circle stamps. It is just... I love them. And so I stamped that onto the packaging, the dyed packaging that I had spoke about before. And then, of course, I put a one of those piece of acetates from Tim Holtz Halloween, and it was a it looked like a broken window. I loved that look because I wanted to put that feather, and of course, I embossed glazed that feather. And of course, then this is a perfect place to put a picture or ATC. And of course, I cut. This is the shape out of a, a, the vintage map, and I glued that on. This, um, this 
shape is from a, a die from David's collection. So let's see if I can show you. It goes like this, this, and that. There you go. Now, we're not done. Not even close. We're going to flip it on over and do the same thing on the other side. Isn't that wonderful? Two envelopes, two 5 by 7 envelopes put together. Now, I'm not going to explain on because it has a pretty much the same elements on of envelopes. On this side, it's just the different looks of using the um, cutouts or the die cuts or leftovers, things like that. So it'll be a little bit quicker. So the first thing I used is that CD holder. There again, that it is on the packaging, stamped, slid that into there, made it into a nice visual, added a little piece of fiber. And this is just a small piece that was cut out. It was on one of David's. I love that little flower. And so I cut that specifically out and used here, that little bird tag. It is a very, I, I tore it off here, stamped on the bird and put a piece of um, measuring tape. I had a vintage measuring tape and put that in there, it slides right in. I paper clipped it because it has a tendency to kind of slide out. But then this piece, that stamp is from David's stamp set. Oh, my favorite, love, love, love it. And I just cut it at an angle, put it, put a ticket, this is a large ticket in there. Isn't that so cute? So cute. Here is the, using the negative side and a glassine envelope. Here you go. We're going to start from here, go that way. So here, I just used shorten. One of his dies has a hole. It's a smaller, fits into um, the art journal. And it, I loved this paper look. Stamped it up, sewed it on, used it as a tuck spot onto the um, vellum pocket. And of course... I also made, this is an ATC size, but this is David's stamp. Stamped it on that um, beautiful paper that Elizabeth Craft Design has. Oh, it's a dreamy set of paper. And here is, I just layered a bit of map, two sizes of tickets. Always love, always. Isn't that, and of course, the dies come with the Denison label. The Denison, is that what you, I think so. I think that's what they call them. And it just fits right in there. Isn't that just nice flow? Okay, I also wanted to show you this beautiful stamp. Now this stamp um, is, as you can see, is that. But I wanted to make it into a belly band. And that is what I did. On a glassine envelope with some lattice of David's paper, I embossed and then colored, inked it back up. And let's see, I'll, I'll bring it a little closer to you. So you can see the emboss there. And then I just inked it with um, distress inks and then put a piece of vintage fabric underneath. And of course, I dye coffee dye and tea dye my fabrics. That's just what I do. I absolutely love it. Same concept. This is this book page is a double thick of book page because I love vintage books. Another card. And of course, David's beautiful use your wings and a dragonfly. And it is a belly band. Using remnants can you see that there we go leftovers this is the negative part another example not to throw 
your pieces out, use them. Oh. Yeah, we're going to do it this way. So the back side of that is just a tuck spot. His, his uh, ATC coins, his paper is, this is just a um, stamped on it, stamped that script on a piece of the, mm, it's that paper that I cannot think of the name from um, Elizabeth Craft. It's that beautiful feather, feather, well, anyway, and um, stamped it, vintage, dyed it, put a little of a thread behind the feather, and I used Seth Afters embossing powders because I wanted to have a little bit of roughness, and you can kind of see the roughness. It really is, but it just really added a lot. And of course, this is the shape of one of his tags. Put a little bit of fiber on top. Here is another little, that small, this really small envelope, glassine envelope. This is just a pretty that uh, it is not clipped on, it is actually glued on, but I love the layering. Love the fact that you can take elements and layer them and just make it so, so a little bit. That turned out so pretty. And I am thrilled with this little specimen slide. Now this is the smallest out of David's. I'm going to take that off to really show you. It is the, the shape Nice little vintage clip. The shape is that, and you'll see the shapes. Um, it is a beautiful little addition to of one of David's dies. I did that and then I used a small square from another previous die set um, that was last year. And I used acetate. You know, it's it's what that packaging, that plastic packaging, and I did it on both sides. And of course, that stamp right there, the flower floral stamp, is a stamp from, it has, it's on with the birds. It's just really pretty. Be in the moment. And it can fit into that or it can be on top. And it takes a little bit to get that paper clip on there, so I'm just going to throw that in there. So... That's on the back side of the CD. I'm going to take my little business card out. And this is a beautiful, beautiful ticket holder, ATC card holder. Oh, love this shape. Love that. David, that was genius. That gives such flow to our journals. Love it. Great, great, great. Of course, used his paper, stenciled. You can see the numbered stencil. Just had a nice little label there, playtime, stamped that on there. And, of course, the shape. It, this is a little smaller. It's one of his. I just love it. I absolutely loved it. Okay, his paper in the background, um, the the polka dot, I'm going to say the polka dot um, die, the shape of the flowers are in his die set, and there's two, it's the background in the front, and the front has the um, lines for, and you can really layer this up and make sure it's, but I just loved that, and of course the leaves and the stem, and then the labels, and I did a little bit of sewing, and with the gold embossing. And it turned out to be really, really nice. Love that I can just put a little piece of fiber on the top. And here is just another one of, it is used, this is used from Elizabeth Craft Designs. Oh, I'm going to put that down. I will find the name. I won't stumble on that name again. And then this is the technique that I will be making a 
um, video out. I was inspired by Louisa Heinzel. I will link hers down below too. But I wanted to show you how I did it. And of course, a tick -a tag with leftover scraps. This is in, of course, the font of the 2024 is from David's last release. Loved that. That just worked out really well. Okay, this right here, you can see it is a tuck envelope or tuck spot. It is just the negative of circles. And these are David's. And of course, it is the back side of the envelope there. And this, I just made another tuck spot right here. But of course, this is the negative side of the stencil. And that's why the eight, you can see it's lighter versus darker. And I love, I never, you, I never throw away, I try to, I try to never throw away when I'm using stencils and sprays, because that's what this is, Distress Sprays, and you spray onto a stencil, I always have something to flip that stencil over, and that's what made this. One of David's papers. That goes really nice right here, a little piece of that. And this is just, art is in my DNA. I truly believe that. And this is a little homemade whale tail. And that just fits so perfectly. I mean, really, look at how cool, all in, just unified, all of the, and in a different way of doing projects with collections. And not but the least is, I'm going to try to pull it out, it's tight. When I glued these two, it is just another card using David's and there's see that's what I mean by using the positive and the negative of a stencil I just flipped it over but I love that it's just a nice tab takes a little bit of patience to get it in just right there we go And then, of course, you just tie it. Oh, let me try that again. There we go. All right, that is my videos. I will be doing more of detailed, especially on the envelope project, but I thank you so much for hanging in there with me. I knew this was gonna be a little long video, but I will do more videos on explanation and techniques. That is the thing that I want to show you, how to incorporate what you have, even if it's just one die, or one set of stamps and how to utilize things and make it into projects that you can do. It's doable. Everything you have is doable and thank you. Hey, like and subscribe, follow all the other team members. I will put everybody down below. Thank you and have a great day. See you next time. Bye.